Luano Valley. Land of the waiting. Land of the jungle. Luano Valley is situated in the heart of central Zambia, 130 kilometers from Kawe town and 149 kilometers from the capital city, Lusaka. Luano covers a surface area of 9,643 square kilometers divided into the valley and the plateau. An unforgiving terrain, Luano is characterized by thick and thorny bushes, tall blades of grass with buffalo beans and countless gullies and embankments. This is where our story begins. April 2013, the fourth task force on Operation Kusakwila landed in Chimika village in Chief Chambers area dressed like the locals. Some of the troops had been there before, but this time it was different. For nearly seven years, the infamous trio of bandits, popularly known as the Mailoni brothers, have terrorized Luano Valley committing gruesome acts of violence banditry and the cold-blooded murder of 12 victims, fancying themselves chosen. They referred to their criminal acts as the War of Armageddon and were thought to be unstoppable. But this was about to change. Prior to the deployment of Task Force 4, command at two infantry brigade headquarters in Kawe had changed. The new brigade commander, Special Forces trained Brigadier General Charles Chivombe. Brigadier General Chivombe was determined to bring the Mailoni episode in Luano to an end. So when it became apparent that it was going to be a problem, our reaction was not quick enough. We gave the chaps time, you know, in which to consolidate themselves, uh, which we shouldn't have uh, uh, have done. Eventually, uh, we saw uh, the thing and we saw what we wanted uh, uh, to take place. So there was to be a realignment of the orders which had been given uh, before the operational orders. Uh, we changed, you know, so that it became robust uh, for us to, to move in. Uh... In commando, there is what we call pseudo, pseudo operation. Pseudo operation involves the, you adopting the tactics of um, the enemy. So I told Pezele, now from now, I want you to adopt the pseudo operation. And if you adopt that, you will see that this operation within a short time to come to you. Then I gave them what I wanted. Firstly, I said, I want you to keep your hair. Keep your hair, keep your moustache. Uh, no wearing of combat. Because what was killing us was that uh, the patrols who go there in combat. The Milan brothers will see them five, ten kilometers away because it's a hill place. So they would see them. So they are the soldiers. As the soldiers are coming, the Milan brothers will go somewhere else. So I said, shed off your combat. I don't want to see you in combat. I want you to keep your combat away. I don't want to see you in your boots. Make what we call Kwaviro from Taz. Yes. And that's what the Milan brothers were wearing, including the, the locals. Then I don't want you to wear smart clothes. No. I want you to be in tattered, tattered clothes. Because that's the way the Milan brothers are. And that's where the local people are. I want you to have bicycles. The locals have bicycles. They carry their charcoal, their what, on the bicycles. So I want you to do the same thing. The army bought us bicycles, I requested for the bicycles. The army bought us bicycles. The army bought us salaola. The army bought us salaola, so we gave the soldiers salaola. Jeans, 
case. Uh, of course, when you are off duty, that's when you can wash your hair. But when you are on patrol, no washing of your hair. Leave your hair like that. And at the same time, I said, the idea of just going, then you come back at 21 hours is not good. I want you to establish forward observation business. Which they, they did, they said yes sir, establish them. From the observation basis or forward basis, you'll be able now to go. If it's three days, you remain for three days there and you check your area and come back. Later on another group was in the other scam. So it went on. And I said this is what we should do. And for sure uh, things started changing. With the new orders, troops set out to establish camp in the heart of the valley by Major Mpezele, also special forces. Many of the troops were new recruits, excited at their first deployment and with youthful bravado that was sure to yield results. So when we came into the mission, for us as the young soldiers, it was it was a new experience because uh, it, it was the first time that we were going out on an on operation. But again, we were we had a lot of old, old, old soldiers, so to say, who accompanied the company. So they, they would tell us to learn from them because some of them were going there for like, the second time, the same operation. Second operation, sir, it was difficult. But we promised, we promised the, the commander that we were going to bring those things in one week, one week time. Not knowing that the area there is too vast. <laughs> mm. We thought maybe it was like, maybe Shindu in Ibarasi. Mm. Not knowing that area, yeah, it's too vast and mountainous. My unit was ordered to prepare a company to take over this operation. One of my officers had already saved there, that is Mpezele. Mpezele had saved their area under the commanding officer General Kamwaza. So when I was preparing to deploy, I looked at the troops that had operated their area with Mpezele. Those are the troops, together with the new soldiers that came in from Integrity 2, I constituted a company and deployed them at um, our three mechanized uh, battalion range. Our task force, it was, um, it was not organized in a manner or in a way a normal platoon or company is organized. That was a force which was uh, conducting suit operations. So we are looking at uh, the capabilities. We were uh, uh, teamed up in, a, in groups, and those groups were balanced. In each team, we made sure that they were good snipers, they are good soldiers in the map reading, they were uh, good soldiers also who were able to to help in terms of uh, medical and the groups are balanced, but we are not based on a standard uh, military platoon or company, no. It was just the capability of the men that were involved in, in that operation.
So what we did, we quickly uh, went to the range where we are doing what we call uh, scenario training. I could just come up with the scenarios. I pick up a balanced team, I indicate to them, take for instance, the Myron brothers have been seen uh, fishing in a river. I just assume that there is a river somewhere. Then I give that scenario and a team who go now, I see how they can approach that river. After moving for days, troops finally arrived at the forward base in the village at the center of Luano Valley. The village, once used before, was strategically located to allow for long-range patrols that could cover most parts of the valley and parts of the plateau. The villagers, happy to see the soldiers, welcomed them warmly and knowing very well that with them around, the village would be safe. This is the new camp, different from the old camp. The community has grown bigger and bigger, bigger than the way it was way back in 2011. Shinika, our good Shinika. Shinika, our good home. Luano is often referred to as the land of the waiting. It is said that life in Luano is so simple that even a lazy but patient man can survive. The people in the valley, they have um, a very rich uh, <laughs> lifestyle in terms of their way of life and the, the food they eat. Where they stay, of course, we can say that they are really cut off from the rest of the community because it's a sunken place. But essentially, Guano Valley is very expansive and extensive as well. So the lifestyle of the people there being followed because they follow the, the settlements are along the Nusenfa River. Because the, the, the Nusenfa River is very rich in the marine life or water life. You find a lot of fish there, they do a lot of fishing. So the, one of their livelihoods is around fishing. And then it's rich in game. The people in the valley are hunters because they live with game. So they, they have a lot of hunting skills. When you are born as a boy in one valley, you, grow, you are growing up. Those are the things that they pay attention to. You got to know how to hunt, how to trap animals, how to kill using spears, that is, of course, animals, and also how to fish. Now, the way the boys were brought up, 
because in, in the family there were six boys and two girls. In total there were eight. So the, the mother took up the responsibility of raising the, the whole family after the husband died. The husband died, the, the, the year was not specific, but he died when they were quite young as a family because all of them are from the Mailung Chukokoro and Janet Njim. Janet Njim is the mother to the Mailung brothers. So they, they grew up with the mother and one aspect that was coming out strongly, they, this unusual congregation around the mother, they congregated around the mother so much that um, it became like even leaving her to go and become part of the community at a later stage became very difficult. The other boys were kind of mild and uh, not as vicious as Tonda, but they had this common thing of brotherhood. If you start a fight with one of the minor brothers, you have started a fight with the rest of them. Tunda Mailoni was a troubled and troublesome individual. He was the second youngest of the brothers, yet the most brutal and unpredictable. Prior to the killings, it is believed Tunda visited a diviner. Tunda suffered from acute paranoia, hallucinations and episodes of dementia. As Tunda's condition worsened, he began imposing rules on his brothers. Tunda introduced mandatory fasting, and the brothers would go for days without food or water, singing religious hymns. Mixing with the locals was forbidden, as was wearing anything red. So manje pa 27 May 2007. On 21st May 2007, a group of 39 villagers mobilized against the brothers armed with stones, spears, machetes, and muzzle loaders. However, despite being outnumbered 10 to 1, the villagers were unable to subdue the brothers and what followed was the death of the brother's first victim, Mr. Roy Mondoka. Out of grief and anger, Mr. Mundoka's son, Roy, picked up another of his father's muzzle loaders and went after the brothers.
It was Voy that was the first to have a clear shot at the brothers and fired an aim shot at Sunday, killing him where he stood. The brothers uh, started their killings uh, according to the information that we collected. Their first victim, Mr. Mondoka, was uh, uh, killed in self-defense. And knowing that uh, they had killed someone, they had to run away from justice, uh, go in the bush. And to survive, they now started uh, attacking the villagers, and uh, some of them killing them. There are a number of them that survived their attacks, but uh, those that they killed, we find that they uh, actually would use their spears and the victims would be stabbed not less than 14 times. Uh, there's also a list that they had of those that they would uh, have killed. And uh, when they kill the, their next victim, they will go and record it. And uh, say, we have killed this person, he is a father, for example. Meaning that there was a list that they were following. All the brothers' victims had the same cause of death. They all died from wounds caused by multiple stabbing. Now, in their, in their write-ups, you find uh, certain consistencies. Uh, for example, witchcraft. They hated witchcraft. And so they would always refer to biblical verses that had to do with witchcraft and uh, how God hates witchcraft. They also hated adult fornication. They would always write about verses that uh, uh, were referring to the fate of those that were adulterers. Having talked to uh, the people in Luanu, uh, all of them attested to the fact that they had no chance. My own brothers are a clear example of mastery of the environment. These brothers were also quite sharp. They were quite intelligent. Uh, they devised their own tactics. For example, they would uh, change the sole of their shoe, the front part points behind, one, behind and the one that is behind points in front. And as they are advancing or moving to wherever they are going, when you trace their footprints, you would think they are going in the direction they are actually coming from. These are village kids who travel in the state with no prior military training. No arms. But use of psychological warfare on the people who knew their terrain and attacked. The brothers settled around the river and used their spears with lethal precision and deadly accuracy. They always seemed to be one step ahead of the law enforcers. I, I want to say that it was a, quite a tedious operation. Um, soldiers were, you know, if you have been to Lano Valley, it's not an easy place. And it was raining heavily, especially during the rainy season. Soldiers would walk through those hills and valleys to track these uh, Milan brothers, but would, they never gave up. And that also shows how well trained the Zambian soldiers are. So, Noruba, 
Bambire wena tunda ni shine ndi ku ndi ku skoro ku chiromba soro naire mu 2007 na pwishe mu December ndo na sangira timi karire ku yana ichinja takuri kuenda mari endere we are not the people are not free to move so eso naire ku ku mushina ene na ikara to ikere pya findo no ko fetu ku baipa na to ikara nomba yo chai shire chira munomba Avantu nomba yoro wafumye nomba kwa tiyo fwetu wala ikara akos to the other side of the river. China Edman ina avantu wakwe wabuka. Kai kuja kukotu wala ikara yikuwa ali semu area ya wena tunda. So kutu wala itina tumebi one day wala kutubilaisa mungu tichita ataki kuya kuna kuni. So bo nse kuja tu wala iku kwa tu wala ya the other side of the river. Muliva, muliva Edman ni table. So kuri aku dengan ni ni kade aman tuan tu tabari free ni ni endere ni miri mine ni wanse hari ni kom kaya aman tu barat china tinggal aman bawa aku mawala ini mana tuan dah bawa bawa sang mawala apa aziriza untuk kuari kuari bensala kaya people tabari bawa free kuat tabari me kuat uli uli me uli coba nak kunum me bina bes The brothers killed and had no regards for men, women, or children. No one knew where the brothers were and when they would show up. But one thing was certain, meeting them only meant death. When I was being appointed as uh, a commanding officer for, for three mechanized uh, infantry battalion, that was uh, the time actually the, the my brothers uh, uh, were a menace in the, in the Rwanda Valley. One other uh, issue that I feel personally also attributed to the killing of my, of my brothers was the idea to remove the suspicion from the soldier's mind. And I think for me that was my starting point. I realized that uh, because of this superstition uh, they had, it was not going to be very, uh, they are not going to perform very effectively in the, in the field because they believed that uh, these guys were using juju. You know, to fact, there was no juju involved. So what I did as the first task was to ensure that I changed the mindset of the soldiers. So the first task I did was to remove all the old soldiers from the field, those who were polluted, because I discovered that they were actually polluted. So I removed or withdrew all the old soldiers and injected in the operation area fresh troops where recruits who have just come from, from the pass out. So those are the troops that we injected in the operation area so that uh, we can have fresh troops and fresh minds who are going to be objective with the task. I can say it is out of uh, the experience that I had when I went at the first. And at the same time, I think I want to appreciate those commanders who came uh, after me. Because uh, I added the information I had at the first and what they had. So you, you realize that with the time, a lot of evidence showed that the Marum brothers were in the fight. So, most of the concentration now shifted to the valley. 
When I realized that the time when I was there, a lot of stories at the plateau, they could not add up to anything concerning their presence. Even when my, my fellow commanders who went there, when I looked at the stories that were telling me to say this is what we saw, I realized that in the valley, that's where you find the mining brothers. So the second time I went there, we concentrated much in the valley. And what helped us a lot now, it was like uh, even the admin, uh, administration burden was a little bit uh, light because this time around, we could be supplied by the helicopters. We were bringing rations right in the valley. But initially, we used to carry food from the top of the mountain down to the valley. We were using potterage, using locals and soldiers. So, time for patrols. I think in manpower, we were somehow hit because soldiers getting tired in terms of the administration. But now, when we started concentrating just on patrols, and we are no longer concentrating much on the, on the plateau, we went now in the valley, because most of the evidence now was in the valley. The first evidence in the valley was when I was there, we found some mirimi, some shoes, and some other food items that uh, those were abandoned by the Maron brothers. It was long suspected that the brothers were being aided by some of the villagers, and some of the suspects included their sister, an uncle, and of course their, their mother. The brothers would also extort information and other supplies from the locals that went out hunting or to check on their animal traps. Therefore, to isolate the brothers, the troops introduced curfews and they also began laying ambushes. They would also escort the villagers on their routine tasks and in doing so, the world that the brothers were operating in became smaller and smaller. We discovered that they lived a semi-nomadic kind of life, but uh, to an, an untrained eye, maybe they would think that uh, they were just uh, randomly selecting those places. But when you critically analyze those areas, you would discover that uh, I think they were looking at it from the way they had mastered uh, that environment. And um, that was the reason why it was very difficult, uh, even for the military personnel and the police, to, to get them. That is the reason why some people are thinking that maybe they are uh, using charms to disappear and reappear in certain areas. But I think it all boils back to the use of uh, terrain. There was no witchcraft. The chaps were just uh, well trained. They knew what they were doing. You know, uh, as to witchcraft, no. There was nothing like that. On the day that the brothers were gunned down, some of the locals had requested for escort to go and check on their animal traps. The troops had moved for close to six hours from the camp, which was at Chimika, to River Mualala, where actually the brothers were discovered. They were shifting camps and had been moving torches of fire. It was the smell of smoke that gave their position away, making it easy to locate and follow their tracks.
It was at the end of the tracks that he came face to face with the brothers. I think for one thing, I knew that I couldn't outrun him. That's one thing. I knew that I couldn't outrun him. And also I knew that if I don't kill them, they are going to kill me. So I just had to stand and also uh, those locals, they had faith in me because in the moment we started following the, foot, the footsteps, they were moving at a distance. I was uh, in front, then they stayed back. So they, maybe they had confidence in me, so I wouldn't want to disappoint them also to join them. And so I, I, I stood my ground. That's why I stood my ground. Seeing the soldier, the brothers immediately charged with their spears in hand. With the lives of the locals at risk and unable to stop the brothers in any other way, Private Shapila had no option to fire. Training, train hard, 
Of course, we get results. But also, what is important is that we must trust God.